Do you want to know how to get your kid to stop wetting the bed? I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communication, child development, all through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about stopping the bedwetting. <laughs> I remember all too well my first child training them to do the potty training and the bedwetting and the frustration. And then I remember being told some sage advice. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about some of that sage advice. Some of it might surprise you. And then we'll be talking about some things that you can teach your child so that they can learn not to wet the bed anymore. You know, it's really difficult to do potty training and to handle bodily functions. It's one thing if a child screams at you, you can say, that's not a calm voice, let's redo it the right way. But when the child wets the bed, how do you say, let's redo that the right way? You know, it's a bodily function that happens. Now I know a lot of bedwetting happens when a child is potty training, okay? And that's a normal thing to occur during that time, but I also know that there are many people who bedwet way longer than that. And I know my husband would not be sad if I told people this, but he was wetting his bed for a long time. I think until he was probably in almost junior high, maybe even he would wet the bed. He had to take little pills, he said, and they didn't do him any good. He said, I don't know if he always got them down because they tasted really bad. He always laughs and says how his mom tried to disguise them in everything possible these little blue pills. But in the end, it didn't stop the bedwetting for him. There was a thing that happened that he just finally grew out of it. So here's one thing that maybe a lot of people don't want to hear, and that is that ultimately, unless there is some, something wrong with the bladder or the sphincter that is in charge of handling the flow of urine, then the child will learn it. They'll get it at some point or another. And one of the wisest things that you can do is not take it personally, not get upset, and make sure that you stay calm. So just like when you're potty training, when a child has an accident, you don't get emotional about it. You handle it very matter-of-factly. Oh, it looks like we had an accident, or it looks like we wet the bed. I guess we better clean that up right? And then you, with the child, help them learn how to clean that up and you don't take it personally. You don't act like it's any big deal, okay? That is what you do when you're potty training a child. So why wouldn't we do that even later? I know it can be more frustrating when the child is nine and wetting the bed or 11 and wetting the bed or 13 and wetting the bed. My son had a friend who had to wear a pull-up until he was in his teens. But you know, to his parents' credit, they just said, you know what? Some people have problems at night. And if you're gonna be one of those people that has problems at night, it's gonna be frustrating for you, but we're gonna not let it be frustrating for us. And here's how to handle it. When you have an accident, you know, here you go. And they just helped him handle it. They didn't make it a big deal. And I think that's what we always need to do. We need to give them encouragement like, yeah, you can do this, you'll get it, don't worry. Your body will learn how to do this, don't worry. And then just let them handle the circumstances. Shaming a child, getting angry at a child because of it is not the right approach to take. So we're gonna talk about some skill development that you can use to help with bedwetting. But before we do, do you see that subscribe button? That subscribe button is meant to be pushed. And when you push it, you will see more videos just like this. So if you want to have more great content in your feed, click subscribe now. So I teach self-government and in my teaching self-government parenting system, I talk about different skills that a person should learn in order to self-govern. There are four basic skills that I suggest teaching children that take care of 99% of their behavioral problems. Those four basic skills are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences and disagreeing appropriately. The skill that applies to bedwetting is following instructions. So when your body needs to go to the bathroom, then your body is giving you an instruction. You need to go. So before bed, you need to give yourself an instruction. I need to go to the toilet, 
right? That is an instruction you would give yourself and you need to follow it. But also your body in the middle of the night might give you an instruction that you need to go to the toilet in the middle of the night. Well, you have to train your body and your brain to wake up so that it follows the instruction. Sometimes just doing a little bit of pre-teaching to the brain can help where you can say, okay, brain, when the body is instructing itself to use the toilet. You need to recognize that and wake up. You need to wake up and go into that bathroom and use the toilet. So you pre-teach your brain. This is what it's going to feel like. This is what you are going to do brain. And you work yourself into that place. So help them be proactive about it right? Help them think ahead of time each night. Okay, if it happens tonight that I need to go to the bathroom, then brain, you need to wake up when that time occurs so that you can get there. You pre-teach yourself for success. This is incredibly powerful and motivating for a person to know that they can train themselves to do something. Here's another thing we want to definitely remember, and that is that when you are having a trouble with bedwetting, obviously don't be drinking before bed or during the night. So what you'll probably want to do is set a cutoff time where you say, okay, we don't drink after 8 p.m. or we don't drink after 6.30 p.m. or whatever it is. We don't drink, right? And you may want to also wake your child up in the morning instead of waiting for the child to wake up in the morning. Because if you wake up the child in the morning and take them to the toilet, then the child's body will get in the habit of thinking, oh, I've got to wake up and go to the toilet. Instead of waiting, sometimes a child will sleep until their body wets the bed. Wetting the bed usually happens more in the morning than in the middle of the night. So if we remember that, we remember, okay, well, certain people's bladder has certain capacity. So let's not drink after a certain time. And truthfully, that's not the best for cleansing the body, but just to conquer this one bit, it's worth doing for a bit, okay? So don't drink after a certain point in the night and then, what you do is you wake the child up in the morning. Maybe even early, you say, I'm gonna wake them up and go to the bathroom, have them go to the bathroom, and then might even put them back down to sleep afterward. You could do that. I know some parents that have woken their child up before they go to bed. So they put the child to bed, then they wake the child up one more time before they go to bed and have them use the toilet, put them back in the bed, and then wake them up in the morning too. Sure, that takes a lot more work on the part of the parent, but what you're doing is you're training the bladder to wait. And that's what you have to do. There are many people who just because they sleep so deeply or whatever it is, they don't tell the bladder to wait. And sometimes they need training from you as well as that mental programming that they can do for themselves. Now, sometimes it's motivating to have positive consequences when a person actually chooses to get up when it's time. So let's say you're going to wake your child up in the morning early so that they have the opportunity to use the toilet. Well, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to say, okay, I'm going to wake you up every morning at 6 a.m. to use the toilet. And if you wake up at 6 a.m., then later, you know, after breakfast, you can have one of these fruit snacks or one of these treats or something like that. And so you'll be able to have a treat every day if you wake up and you go potty at 6 a.m. Even if you go back to bed, it's fine. But at 6 a.m. we potty, okay? And so just that, just the waking up at 6 a.m. to potty, even if they already wet the bed before, doesn't matter, wake them up to potty at 6 a.m. If they do that, they earn a positive. And did you know you wake a person up enough times at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., whatever time you think you want to do, to use the toilet? Their body will get programmed to use the toilet at 7 a.m. And I know that because I wake up at 6 a.m. every day. I don't even need an alarm. My body just wakes up because it has to go to the bathroom. And I can go back to bed after that, no problem. But that is my body's cue time to wake up because there were for many years times where I would wake up and I pottied at 6 a.m every single day in other other years when I had different jobs and stuff. And so guess what? My body just does that. That's just how it is. We train ourselves to do things. So positive consequences for some of that positive behavior that is almost surely going to happen is really great because then that makes the whole 
experience more positive. I think a lot of people really get negative because they get worn out on the bedwetting behavior, but you've got to make sure that you are accepting your own no answers too. Every time a child wets a bed, that is a no answer for you. So that means you need to look at the situation, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say, okay, that happened, and then drop the subject. Stop thinking about it. Every day is a new day, and tomorrow could be the day where it doesn't happen again. Now, there's one thing that I can guarantee you, and that is that every person figures this out. So no matter what, your child will get the bedwetting thing out of the way. It won't happen after a while. It will solve the problem for good. But if you keep increasing the stress, if you are not calm, it will make it last longer. So your calmness is key. And because of that, I want to give you a gift for your calmness. I have a calm parenting toolkit on my website and today you can have that calm parenting toolkit for free. So in the description below this video, there is a link that says teachselfgov.com slash toolkit. If you go to that link, you can have my Calm Parenting Toolkit for free. It has 10 tools for calmness. I think it will really help you to decrease the stress, which will actually make it so that child will probably succeed better and not wet the bed as often. Your stress about it actually does make a difference in them conquering that behavior. So click on the link to that toolkit now and I'll see you there.